千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. I would like to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now, to be fully present and mindfully aware. As we all ready ourselves for this sacred process of the Tao. So now let me tie the two together: conservation and submitting early. It's actually quite easy. Take a look at this. Apply the wisdom to conserve and conserve the character there that you see is se. In ancient context, it means to not waste. First, I'm dividing this up into two parts: the unwise and the wise. Keep in mind that all of us gather together here right now. We've been both in our lives. We've been unwise and we've been wise in different times, different circumstances. Sometimes we live up to the ideal; other times we don't. That's just reality. So I'm gonna characterize. Unwise and the wise, in terms of getting getting things done, like working on a particular project or a task. Usually, very often, we find that we have a set amount of time to get something done. If it's a project, perhaps the project has a deadline. In the case of a recent endeavor. Uh, it may be, for example, when you、uh, as a student you want to study for an exam, and you know the exam is going to happen on a particular date. You you want to prepare for that. The preparation leading up to the exam that's a project too. When faced with something like that, you have a certain amount of time, and you have some things that need to be accomplished. The unwise will usually say throughout most of that process, "Oh, I still have time. Tomorrow, I will start. Next week, I will start. Next month, I will start. Right now, I'm focusing on something else. You know, don't bother me right now. I'll、uh, I'll get back to it. I'll circle back with you. What about the wise? The wise." Will look at the project or the task, and the very first thing that the wise will do is to gain clarity on the amount of time. When is this due? How much time do I have? In tasks, that is, what are the things that I have to do? What are the tasks and the subtasks that I need to accomplish in order to? Finish the overall objective. Instead of oh, I still have time. The wise will figure out exactly how much time that means. So then, when you say I still have time, that results in wasting time. It results in procrastination. And I am not exempting myself from this discussion, everybody. I, in my life, have often procrastinated in the past. I am happy to say that I found a lot of help and support by learning and studying and understanding the Tao, and then applying that to myself. So I'm able to cure my own procrastination. When I understand the philosophy at a deeper level, so hopefully I have gone from being unwise, at least in some respects, to being wiser. The wise, having gained clarity 
on time versus things to be done, well then incrementally work on those tasks. That is, divide them up within the space allocated as far as the timeline, and then that gives you the clarity on what has to be completed by what time. So the result is that for the young wise, you grow increasingly desperate at the 11th hour. You leave everything until the last minute. When that gets closer, you feel anxious. You wish it could have started earlier, but then by that time, it is too late. So then desperation drives you at the 11th hour. You're running around wondering what to do. What is the quick cure? What is a miracle? Who do you pray to for help? The wise, when things get close to the end, is still on track, still relaxed. So I'm happy to say that since I was able to do something about my own procrastination, I've been on the right side of this more often than not. Then for the unwise, eventually time runs out. And that's usually when disaster occurs because of the lack of preparation. Things are not done, things are not ready. Whereas for the wise, it's a smooth handling of the approaching deadline where the deadline is really nothing special. It's just another one of the many milestones in the timeline that the wise has already set up. No surprises, very well prepared. So overall, if you think about the difference between the two, to conserve is not just time, it's not just energy, it's economy and efficiency in every aspect of life. It's doing things in the most direct way possible, no beating around the bush. It's also about efficient economy of expression, no beating around the bush in terms of you don't have to couch what you say in a lot of fancy phrases, you can just come directly to the point. So, in conclusion, you can see the unwise usually think they have plenty of time until time runs out. And if they wait until the last minute, or in my expression here, the 11th hour, it just means that they have already wasted a lot of time, time that they will never get back. To be wise means you have to have this, this clear view on where you are in the overall process, which is to say, how much have you done so far? How much is yet to be done? And how much time is left? In this way, you avoid wasting your time, which is a resource. You avoid wasting your other resources. You conserve. And let me also speak of time itself. As long as we have the clock here, I want to talk about time as a limited resource in the sense that we all have 24 hours a day. It is therefore up to us to use what we have, what we all have efficiently, and not waste too much of it. So then let's continue on. In order to see this right now, we're at the stage of conservation. You can see, yeah, we're conserving time by being efficient, by planning ahead. That makes sense. Now I want you to do I want, to, I want to take this right here and expand it to encompass an entire lifetime as if your life is a giant project. So here's how that works. You're going to see the correspondence. And I'll use a calendar here instead of a clock to represent that. Well, we talked about how there's only 24 hours in a day. So in a sense, a lifetime is limited in a similar way. It's not a set number of hours like it is with a day, but a lifetime. We know 
we all have a certain amount of time, usually measured in decades. There, it is also up to us to use what we have efficiently and not waste too much of it. So the unwise in living life, the correspondence to I still have time, I'm still searching. Yeah, I'm still searching. I'm still searching for myself. I'm still searching for answers. I'm still searching for meaning. I haven't found it yet. I'm still searching for my place in the world, my purpose in life. The wise would be thinking in a different way. The wise would convert that thinking. The wise can also engage in a search. But the wise is aware that a question like this, you know, what is the answer in life? What is the purpose? What is the meaning? What's my place in it? Why am I here? That question is not a new question. It's not something that we're asking for the first time in human history. It is something that every human being has asked in every generation. And going back to the beginning of humanity, it's a very ancient question. It's as old as humanity. Therefore, many people in the past have already dealt with the question. Some of them are were a lot wiser than we are. They have jotted down their answers. They have blazed a trail. They have pointed to the path, the Tao. And we're in a position to take advantage of that. We can stand on the shoulder of giants and look further. We can leverage what they have done so we don't waste time. So we don't have to expend a lot of energy unnecessarily. Thus, the wise understand what it means to leverage ancient wisdom. The unwise, rather than to do that, would try one thing after another. Usually, whatever is fashionable, faddish, whatever happens to be all the rage, try one thing after another, never quite finding the answer, or finding something only to find out after a short time that it isn't right after all, or it doesn't work. The wise will get started on the path of spiritual cultivation, whatever form that takes, as soon as possible. This is where you begin to see the connection between submitting early and conserving. When you submit early, you save a lot of time and effort. So as the years wear on, as time goes on, you get closer and closer to the end of a lifetime. The unwise will still be searching, will still be trying one thing after another, and will be feeling lost in terms of life direction. The wise, having started early on the path, will now be moving forward with definite purpose. There is a joy and happiness in that definite, definitive purpose that you possess as you move forward. So that is the difference. And that's how we connect the dots, connect between conserving and, quote unquote, submitting early. That's a concept that doesn't really have a Western equivalent. It basically just means, uh, look, just, you know, just get into this as early as you possibly can. Stop the, the dilly dally, dillying around. Um, you're just, uh, you're going to think yourself later. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us all travel safely so we can meet again. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.